Sometimes you can look at the things going on in the world and wonder how they could possibly turn out right. But I'm here to encourage you right now to let you know that there is coming a move of the Holy Spirit such as we have never seen before. That's not rhetoric. That's reality. If you believe that, simply write in the comment section, I'm ready. If you're full of faith, if you expect a move of the Holy Spirit, if you know deep within your spirit that something good is coming to the nations of the world, that God has not given up on this generation, I want you to publicly declare that I'm ready. Now, I want to read a portion of scripture to you found in John 20, 22, and I'm going to show you two other portions of scripture. And I'm going to use these verses to show you how the Holy Spirit moves in patterns or waves. You know, looking back at history, church history, the history of the nations, and looking at scripture, it becomes evident that moves of the Holy Spirit crest like waves upon the earth. There's an ebb and flow to God's sovereign move. Yes, we should walk in God's power daily. Yes, we can, by faith, activate the power of the Holy Spirit. But there's another element. There's another dynamic. There's a sovereign move of God, and it's partnered with how we respond to heaven. We respond to heaven. Heaven responds to us. We each have a role to play. And as we walk in obedience, as we surrender to the Holy Spirit, God sovereignly responds to surrender. So there are two dynamics to this. But the reality is that there is also a timing to God's moving. There is also a timing to these waves. Just look, as I said, at church history, at the history of the nations of the world. Look at scripture. I'll show you here, John 20, 22. This is where Jesus, look at this verse. We see here that Jesus breathed on them and told them to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, this is interesting because these same people, not all of them present, but some of these people who were there when Jesus breathed on them and told them to receive the Holy Spirit were also among those present in Acts chapter 2. Now watch this, Acts 2, 1 through 4, a very popular portion of scripture. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So here we see a group of people receiving a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit's power. You know, the Holy Spirit moved in the book of Acts. This was the beginning of the church age. There was a fresh endowment of power that came upon God's people. But the Holy Spirit existed before the book of Acts chapter 2. And the Holy Spirit moved before the book of Acts chapter 2. I mean, look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, where the Holy Spirit hovered above the face of the deep. Look at how the Holy Spirit gave Joseph the ability to interpret dreams. And so the Holy Spirit has been moving, is moving, and will continue to move. But as I said, there are waves or flows or seasons of intensified power upon the earth. And again, this has to do with both the sovereignty of God and the surrender of man. Still, we see that some of those from John 20, 22, who were present when Jesus breathed on them and told them to receive the Holy Spirit, were also present in the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. So Jesus breathes on them, tells them to receive the Holy Spirit. They receive that touch of power. And then some who are among that group wait until the day of Pentecost. And then on the day of Pentecost, another wave of power comes upon them. But it didn't stop there. It continued. Look at this now in Acts chapter 4. I'm going to read verse 23. And then I'm going to read verses 29 through 31. Watch this. Verse 23. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done 
through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. So I want to point out a few things here. First, I want you to note the fact that Peter and John were with this group in Acts chapter 4 who prayed and received the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, the scripture says. Now, Peter and John must have been there in John 20, 22, when Jesus breathed on them. They must have been there. They were there in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. And now we see them present with the believers who are, again, filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I found it interesting. In verse 30, the Bible says, stretch out your hand with healing power. Okay, weren't miracles already happening? Yet here they are praying for healing. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Wait a minute. Wasn't the miraculous already occurring through the lives of these believers? Of course, the miraculous was already occurring. Verse 31, after this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all, not some, all filled with the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. Who was with that group? Peter and John. Peter and John were there in Acts chapter 2. Peter and John were there in John 20, 22. Peter and John were with Jesus during his earthly ministry. Peter and John were driving out demons, healing the sick, raising the dead. Yet here they are receiving fresh touches of the Holy Spirit's power. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Wait a minute. Then they preached the word of God with boldness? Wasn't it Peter who stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached a powerful sermon that was so effective that 3,000 people were added to the believers that day? Peter had boldness already, but what we're seeing here is a fresh touch of that boldness. Ephesians 5.18 says this, Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. In the original language, in this particular verse, that phrase, that command to be filled implies a continuation of that feeling. Not like water in a cup, but like wind in a sail. The power of the Holy Ghost is both a well and a river. The empowering of the Holy Spirit is both a one-time experience and a continual state of being. There is a continuation of this flow. There are waves of his power. This doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit comes and goes. This doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit abandons us in some seasons and then comes back in other seasons. This simply means that as we begin to surrender to that power, as we begin to yield ourselves, as we see in Acts chapter 4, through prayer, through devotion, through surrender to God, there comes upon us fresh touches of the Holy Spirit's power. Now, to what I'm telling you, what I'm encouraging you with. There is coming a move of the Holy Spirit to the nations of the world that is going to absolutely transform the globe. This is not, as I said, rhetoric. This is reality. How do we know this? Well, just look at God's track record. Look at the timeline of human history and you will see specific sovereign moments where God began to do something in the earth, where God began to stir. Sovereign stirrings of the Spirit, I like to call them. And we see the hand of God. And it's interesting to me that the hand of God always seems to stir these particular movements out of what seems to be the greatest setbacks. Just when things look their darkest. Just when the nations of the world seem to be extremely far from God, the furthest they could ever be. Just when we're throwing our hands up in the air saying, what can possibly be done to reverse this? Just when it looks like evil is winning. Just when it looks like the enemy has had his way. Just when it looks like their hearts are too hard to receive the gospel. That is when the power of the Holy Ghost shows up in that sovereign way. Yes, there's daily power. Yes, we walk in the power of the Holy Ghost daily. I understand that. Yes, we are to some degree live a lifestyle of revival. That's true. 
but I'm talking about those sovereign stirrings, and that's what's coming. It is not just something you should hope for in the sense that we're wishful about it. It is inevitable. It's the way God moves. As I said, just reference history, just reference scripture. Just when you think we've lost, he shows up. Why? Because he wants you to know who did it. It looks impossible. Looks like there's no reversing it. But I'm telling you now, there will be a sweeping in of souls. There will be a turn. Now, some may say, well, you know, the Bible teaches that in the last days, perilous times will come. I agree. In the last days, perilous times will come. But in the last days, the gospel doesn't lose its power. The gospel still works. When Jesus was describing all of the end time events that will lead up to the conclusion, to the last day, he would say, but the end is not yet. Then he said, but this gospel shall be preached to the ends of the earth, and then the end will come. What does that mean? We go out on a high note. This ends with church victory. This ends with kingdom expansion. It doesn't end on a dark note. It ends with light. God will win. Revival is inevitable. Now, some might say, well, they've been saying that. Well, just look at God's track record. It has happened. And so we're saying it again, and it will happen again. I pray you're ready for it. I pray you're positioned in surrender to God so that when that wave comes, you're not left on the shore watching others ride it. Surrender now. Give to God your compromise. Give to God your apathy. Give to God your fear and your doubt that you might be a part of what is coming. It is inevitable. Christ will be victorious. Souls will be saved. Bodies will be healed. Demons will be cast out. People will be delivered. The church will be empowered. And Jesus will be glorified. Father, let us be ready for it. I pray, Holy Spirit, right now that you would bring things to our mind that are not surrendered to you, areas of our hearts and minds and lives. Holy Spirit, cause us to be one with you, to step in sync with you. And Lord, I pray there be a fresh empowering even now. Let them sense your touch on their lives in this moment, in the mighty name. Come on, I want you to pray right now. Surrender to the Holy Ghost. Ask him to use you. Ask him to cleanse you. Ask him to purify your heart. Father, let it be done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Now, don't turn the video off yet. A couple things I want to talk to you about. If you believe that message, you enjoyed that message, and you think that message will encourage others, simply leave a like on the video. Also, make sure you're subscribed to Encounter TV and do click that notification bell when you subscribe. And if you want to get involved with what we're doing as a ministry, you want to help to support the content, the live streams, the events, everything that we're doing. And I'm asking you right now, not tomorrow, not a week from now, not months from now, but right now, I'm asking you to partner with us on a monthly basis. Any amount that's done consistently is effective. You may say, well, my support might not make a difference. That's, that's not true. The enemy is lying to you. You matter. Your support makes a difference. So help this cause, the greatest cause of all, the cause of souls, the cause of the gospel, the cause of the kingdom. Get involved now. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get involved. Become a monthly supporter right now by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Now, if you were encouraged by this message, I want you to check out how to release the anointing in your life, five keys. In that video, I address five different keys that will help you to activate or surrender to the power of the Holy Spirit that God might use you in a mighty way.